If we look at the balance sheet from USDA, this chart being from table being from USDA, here we see the decrease of roughly 152 million bushels in production side, and USDA cut ex, excuse me feed and residual use by 50 million bushels. That'd be a reduction in feed use primarily, and they cut exports by 25 million bushels. I expect both of those to come down some more. USDA is at 1.736 billion bushels here we see for ending stocks. The marketing year average cash price come up 20 cents on the bottom end of this range. So the average is now at about 360 per bushel. Just where, well, I guess last month it was at 350 per bushel. Now here, this is my table I showed you last month on Chinese corn stocks in terms of days of supply. Okay, take a look at this. Now, we're gonna update it with today's data. Whoa, big difference. You can see there how we went from, uh, in 2015 in particular, from 186 days supply, we essentially doubled that to 330, almost a year supply as of 2015. But they are still ratcheting lower uh, just at a little bit slower pace because of the largeness of supply, according to this data. And that red bar in there, I left kind of at the spot where it was at on the old chart. So you can see that some of the previous years, back 10 years ago, were actually reduced down even tighter. So recent years revised up, past years beyond that re revised downward. Overall, USDA is saying that China now has a 274-day supply. I, I question those numbers based on what we're hearing uh, from our boots on the ground, but the bottom line is this shows nobody knows. So if you look at world supplies, and this is the chart I showed you last month, showed world supplies at a 53-day supply, supplies outside of China and the United States at a very tight 38-day supply, the tightest that we've been since 2001, even tighter than when we had record prices here five, six years ago. This is today's chart updated. Okay, world supplies at 100 day supply. But look at this. As we look at supplies um, here, excluding the United States and China, a 39 day supply. There again, that's very similar to where we were in 2011 and 2012. The rest of the world is still in just-in-time supply. So as I went through my balance sheet, my world balance sheet, country by country, looking at domestic usage, imports, exports, and everything, and plugging numbers in, and yes, I didn't do all this in the last two hours. I've been working on this um, and just made the uh, particular revisions um, today where USDA had made changes. I was really surprised, frankly. Now, first of all, I need to point out one big difference. My ending stocks at 2.105 is based on lower exports still by another 80 million than where USDA has it, and lower feed usage by 85 million from where USDA has it, and a higher yield. And that is because our official yield is the results of Bevan's survey that he does each month August, September, October, November, and again, January. No, he doesn't do another one in January. So because of that, 181.4 becomes our official yield right into the January report. So if USDA continues to go lower, we're gonna to have to account for that. That gives us right off the bat a 200 million bushel increase. So to subtract 200 million bushels off of that to equalize it with USDA, and that's a 1.9 billion bushel carryout versus USDA 1.736. And then you factor in the lower exports, the lower feed usage, which I expect USDA to come up to. You plug that into next year, and our client survey results showing 91.2 bushels per acre. I use a 30-year trend yield of 1676.5. Others are going to use different yields. USDA is using this 176.5 as well, if I've read their material correctly. Some would argue that it should be higher. 
we've had well above trend yields in recent years. So is that a new trend or is that reflective of a weather pattern? That is the question. Now, El Ninos tend to be, uh, it looks like we're looking at a strong El Nino. Uh, so we're going to have to watch how that plays into next growing season, whether that's going to be detrimental or supportive, how it strengthens or weakens, and that trend has a big impact on that. But that 30-year trend's at 176. So I start with beginning stocks being 200 million bushels higher because of our high yield this year. I use the 30-year trend yield. And as I worked the world balance sheet, it argued for even with Chinese corn imports not changing from current levels for the next two years, uh, well, this year and next year, I should say, it still argued for ending, uh, excuse me, U.S. exports going to 2.62 billion bushels. And that pulled ending stocks below 1.4 billion. If soybeans lose more acres and we go up to 94 million acres, that still brings us up to 1.8 billion bushels in ending stocks, which is roughly where we're really at today. So this is not nearly as bearish as what I anticipated it would be. I think this too is another reason why we saw the money come back later in the day uh, on the corn market. and We finished in the green with the corn market. This is not arguing that, hey, we need to rally to ration stocks but it does suggest that uh, there will be some limited downside interest right now, at least until they start worrying about exports being worse or soybeans pulling corn down. Uh, this is a little better picture than I expect. 